Dirt sprint cars and midgets, there's nothing like it. There's absolutely nothing like it. I hop in this thing and it was just like, I fell in love, you know, instantly. Racing a sprint car, when you first get in it, it's mean, it shakes, it doesn't idle around very nice. Like it's, it's just everything about it says that it wants to hurt you. It's just intense. From the start of hot laps through the end of the feature, sprint car racing and dirt racing in general is just intense. We're on the ragged edge the whole entire time. There's no fear, like, at all. Strapping in or going racing. But when you know you're about to hit something, that's when you're like, oh, I hope this isn't gonna hurt. The cars are trying to flip over, okay? And that is an eerie feeling. You factor in, Myself and Justin and Larson and, and these guys, we're not scared of that. The sound, the power, the out of control. You're on the edge of your seat the entire time. Everything you do is so fast. Jab and brake, throttles. Racing obviously is dangerous. Time to play it hard, it's hard. It's taken friends of mine. It's something that we all live with. At the end of the day, I'm more alive being a race car driver than not. If you're good at what you do, you can be the star. This is the last great American sport. This series follows the biggest stars of dirt track racing. Guys that have put in the blood, sweat, and grease to achieve victory, and they're going to war every night. This season, we tell the story of dirt and NASCAR superstar Kyle Larson. Modern day Mario Andretti, right here. One of the most talented race car drivers ever sit behind the wheel of a race car. We see what it takes to win with young and up and comers like Justin Graham, Come over here. Tyler Courtney, and Thomas T. Mesmeserol, always hot on Larson's tail. This is the true story of motorsports in America. This is Dirt. Every January, the motorsports world descends upon Tulsa, Oklahoma for the biggest, most competitive midget race of the year, the Chili Bowl. Over 300 of the best drivers from all disciplines go head to head for seven days, culminating in a championship race where only the fastest 24 remain. And only one driver can win the most coveted trophy in all of short track racing, the Golden Driller. Welcome to the 36th annual Lucas Oil Chili Bowl Nationals. It is uh, the first of our five preliminary nights here at the Chili Bowl and uh, going to have all kinds of fun, all kinds of storylines coming into this, big names, and tonight as well, the VacuWorks Invitational Race of Champions. On the cautions, if there's a, a pileup or two or more, 
Just be ready, we're gonna shoot you through the infill. So watch our workers and listen to your radios. Once the yellow comes out, please get off the gas. Also, if you guys get a temper like I do sometimes and you wanna fight, three and four of the front straight away, you're golden. You fight up here, you're done. We can't control the fight once it gets up here. It's one on one down there, so if you wanna do it, do it. This, here's your deal. Good luck everybody, put on a hell of a show. Thank you for coming. It's your first time racing? Yeah, I can't play. Are, are you gonna win? Yeah. Hang on, I gotta get in. I'm going racing. Me too. Okay, well good luck. It is the Monday night. This is your Cummins qualifying night. Making their way to the racetrack now should be your Viroc qualifying cars. They will hot lap Qualify at the same time, that'll set the lineup for their 25 lap A main event to come in a little bit later on the program. There goes Larson, 11.470, bumping McIntosh off the top spot. I can't wait to get into the race car and put my helmet on and like get away from talking to people. You know, as much as I, I like spending time around race fans and stuff, I can't wait to get in the car just to focus and just to get like this calming quietness. I am Kyle Larson and I drive race cars for a living. So I was 14 when I started racing sprint cars in Northern California. I split time between Indiana and California in 2011, following the USAC Midget Tour full time. Once the summer hit, my season took off. Well, Kyle Larson, 2010, Kyle champion. Five or six weeks into it, I had some of the top drivers coming up to me saying, I've never seen car control like this. It's amazing, you know, this kid is 14 years old. Where did he get this? It seemed like I won every big race that year. At Eldora, first time there to race, and he wins all three events. Won midget, sprint car, and silver crown. That night was when my career kind of exploded. The smoke goes away on the Larson car, but now he's racing Jeff Gordon for second. There's just no give up and a lot of talent sitting in that 42. You know, and he was 10 or 11 years old. I, you know, I made a comment about, you want to make it to NASCAR? And he said, I'm going to make it to NASCAR. What was the conversation there with Jeff about Kyle? Oh, he just was giving me some advice there. He was pretty proud of me. I'm sure there, there were some things I could have done differently on that restart, like he was telling me. I can bet you that when Jeff Gordon decides to retire, he'll give him a little more advice. The uh, 2021 NASCAR Cup Series champion, Kyle Larson. Our, our defending champion right here, folks. Give it up one more time. I, I don't think anybody's going to disagree with me when I say this statement. Modern day Mario Andretti, right, right here. One of the most talented race car drivers ever sit behind the wheel of a race car, and, and not just one type of race car, guy can sit in anything. Just amazing that my career went from being you know, a full-time local guy in 2010 in California to racing on the big stage in NASCAR in 2014. You're one of very few that have been able to do that. Maybe one of the only ones in, you know, today, I think of maybe Tony Stewart has been able to get in some other cars, but still even not the level that you have. Tell us about where that started. You know, going back to him saying, I'm gonna make it in Cup, and he did. Just what he said he, you know, could do. Folks, thank you so much for being here again. Give it up, Kyle Larson. Thank you guys, thank you. Going out tonight? I think I'm gonna go out Wednesday. That's gonna be my big night. 
get to do 100 races this year, right? I think I'll be close to it, yeah. If I did everything that I, like, could have, it was like 130. I feel like I'm probably the only one that can really judge competition level between dirt and NASCAR, because I do it all. I, I race dirt sprint cars. Midgets. Contact. Dirt late models. Kyle Larson goes quickest spin. Cup cars. Kyle Larson, man. Your core NASCAR fans sometimes think dirt racing is stepping down. It is not stepping down at all, and, and I hate that kind of stereotype. And it's all equally tough. It's all got its really good guys in each series. <laughs> Up to six, 11, 553, the best on this group so far after a lap and a half or two. After that loud pedal interview with Kyle Larson, I mean, Justin Grant's being thought of as maybe the guy that knocks the king off the top of the mountain this yeah. year. He's coming in with as much hype as he has before. It drives nice. Yeah. It just. I wanted a wheelie in the center, but yeah. it was like a nice wheelie, you know? Unlike a lot of other sports, our sport is very equipment dependent. You know, not everybody gets to play with the same ball here. When I'm at the racetrack, I very rarely actually work on a race car, but ultimately the setup decisions are on my shoulders. It's very important and in a very big aspect of it that the race car is proper. Hi, Dave. Justin is very meticulous about what he does. He takes notes on everything. We'll be making small incremental changes that are just minute and you think, why are we doing this? Makes him feel better, makes the car go faster when he feels better. I've always seen Justin as this quiet guy and I never knew Justin Grant really that well other than he was just a good race car driver and you know, he has his headphones in and just stays really focused. I first met Kyle Larson when I was 13-ish. We both grew up in Northern California. And I was kind of the best kid at Chico and he was like the best kid at Red Bluff. And when we'd end up at the same racetrack, it was always kind of the, the thing of who was better and who was going to come out on top. His career has certainly taken off and I feel like we're still pretty competitive when, when it comes back to it. Night one of the Chili Bowl kicks off with an invite-only race where superstars from every corner of the racing world come together to set Monday night on fire. It's unreal, man. The talent level inside this building is just keeps going up. You know, not just the driver side, but the mechanic side, the equipment side, the engine side. Uh, everybody's bringing super nice cars here. The depth has gotten so great here. The race of champions is, is the who's of who of motorsports. From NASCAR to drag racing to late models, everything, we just got top of the line. The Race of Champions is, is really, it's a good test. You don't get to race at scale a lot of tough cars until Saturday. It's a good opportunity to kind of see where you stack up in race conditions against the guys that you're probably going to be racing on Saturday. I always love this race just for the sheer star power. Where else can you see this diverse of a class of race car drivers from both the open wheel world, the NASCAR world, all coming together, the best race car drivers here at the Chili Bowl in their respective divisions coming together and getting to race. Five times around, Expo Raceway as coming out of the corner, we go green. on cruise control early here in this race, setting a very, very strong pace.
you don't really see Justin Grant crash much, but he's always living on the edge. Justin is just a very aggressive but smart racer. Like we're both fairly ruthless, we're both aggressive, and, and we're both willing to do what it takes to win the race. And there's lookout Kyle Larson. Two for one special for Larson. Thank you very much as he rip roars around. Yeah, this restart's gonna be huge. How fast can Justin get away? If Justin's gonna win this, he's got three great whites just sitting right on his tail. Here we go, back to green, 11 laps to go. Larson. That's one of our goals every time Larson's at a track is we wanna beat Larson. When you're in those moments where Larson's sliding me and throwing big bombs at me, in his position, I'm sure he's, okay, I'm gonna throw these bombs and keep pressuring him, keep pressuring him, and see if I can rattle him. That's kind of the goal, get the guy to run faster than the car wants to be run and to force a mistake. Grant not gapping Larson like he was before. The last 10 laps or so, I was able to get somewhat close to Grant and start throwing these Hail Mary, you know, kind of fake sliders at him, just to really try and pressure him into a mistake, enough for me to clear him on one of them. Grant up top, Larson, whoa, doesn't quite pull it off as they come out of two. Line it up again for turn three. Larson running with reckless abandon with three to go. It's always intense racing with him too, so. We weren't gonna leave each other hardly any room. Two completely different lines, and Kyle's selling out, trying to make something happen. Justin Grant down to two laps remaining. Every time we race with Larson, side by side, it's memorable. It's Grant down the back straightaway. No, that's Bell coming in on him. Yeah, Bell making a late race charge. We're coming to the white flag right here. Justin Grant's your leader. Kyle Larson's gonna try and come and get it. Larson with the bomb on the berm in turn one and two. Can't quite get it done. Grant back to the loud pedal. Through three and four for the final time. Larson, one last haymaker. Will it stick? Larson with the thumbs up saying, I'll, I'll see you yeah. Saturday. Yeah, they know what's at stake here. <laughs> it was a great race. You know, I can respect a, a loss when it's a good race. Our our champion is Justin Grant! I kicked Larson's ass. <laughs>to go if he just follows me in three and four instead of slide me and comes off you know anywhere near me he clears the slider into one and most likely wins the race so we gave kyle an opportunity to beat us there and, and he didn't take it you don't get a lot of breaks like that we got one monday but but we need to be better come saturday I should have went back to the top in three and four. Larson does do a, a great job at playing the games, and he's one of the best at the racecraft aspect of racing. Both changed their lines up at one and two, and Larson took a couple bombs at Justin. And called in years past, I was just full bash all the time. So if I was going to win a race, it was because I was faster than everybody there. I had very little, like, racecraft. It took me a lot longer to, to figure out that side of the game. Loaching his way up to the cushion. Meanwhile, Grant kind of started more middle-based. As... There's spots on the racetrack that it's going to be really tough to pass a car. And there's spots where it's going to be easy to pass a car. The middle wears out first, then the bottom and the top stick around longer, and it's it's the balance of which one of those lanes is going to be faster. It's an ever-evolving, moving target on dirt tracks, and it's something that, that you really just acquire a feel for the more you race. That's why guys that race so often are so hard to beat. Hi, I miss you guys. Thanks, miss you too.
I've ever done. <laughs> yeah, that's fine. Y'all ready to fly out? Um, yeah, I'm probably packing a whole new wardrobe. I <laughs> figured as much. And what I said with you. I that's figured. Uh huh. Had the Vacuum Works Invitational Race of Champions last night, which was just an absolute banger. It was oh one of the best goodness. fly rocks of all time. Chili Bowl is on. Tuesday Chili Bowl. Somebody down on the ground. That's never good. And as drama folds here on Warren Cat qualifying night. I mean, I kind of caught it on the, t the TV, but... I know, he's a big old boy. <laughs> That's so funny. That's that guy funny. must still not be doing very good. No, I think his arm was just like he was getting up. Oh, really? He broke his arm, huh? I'm gonna go to, I'm gonna go to the Twitter and see what's on there. Oh, must have been a midget shirt. Yeah. Okay. Okay. He wants to check to see what happens. What are you kids doing? I had known of Caitlin for a long time, obviously, because her brother... Brad Sweet, you know, I've known of Brad Sweet before I ever started racing. That's my brother-in-law. He races your brother a lot. <laughs> this is me off. <laughs> Why? I'm competitive and Kyle's really good and Brad's the underdog when I am watching the two of them race each other so I feel like you know you got to root for the underdog sometimes. I know Caitlin's got a beer here somewhere so she's ready to shop. Oh yeah she's asking for it and she's gonna crack this thing. Talk about a dirt track wife. This is awesome. <laughs> In victory lane. Oh yeah. Down the hatch. I told Kyle, when you win an NASCAR race, I'm gonna shotgun a beer. Kyle won at Dover in 2019. They caught me on the that boomerang camera, <laughs> shotgun in the beer in the corner. So it kind of took off from there. The entire crowd is gonna go wild with her chugging <laughs> the beer of choice in victory lane. The fans, I mean, they would cheer louder for her than than me. It's a fun, playful, you know, tradition. Now, every race that I go to, every dirt race especially, I have multiple fans come up to me like, where's Caitlin? I'm gonna shotgun a beer with her later. And I tried to tell them I can't work and get drunk all night. Can we get a uh, shot of Caitlin? Caitlin? Where's, where's Caitlin? Caitlin, turn it up! Dude, my hero! That's what I'm talking about, Caitlin! She made her own t-shirt. Shotgun Sweetie is what they started calling me. Sweet is my maiden name, so kind of how that got started. I think she's gotten burnt out from it, you know, with a lot of wins uh, the past two seasons. I might have taken a little break from it. Well, if Kyle could win a few more races, it would come out of retirement. <laughs> Just can talk a little smack here and there. Oh, well, you knew this would be a great party, right? Yeah, it started now, man. Oh, and then Stone Cold Steve Austin style just tosses the blue. She's great because she understands the lifestyle. She's grown up around it perfect match for me because I'm I'm really busy racing. This is a week-long deal, so you know you have to go through four, five, six races sometimes to get into the main show. Just like that folks, we've got engines fired, cars are on the racetrack for our first hot lap of night number two. Good now. Except Tanner, man, he was like in another zone. Yeah. He's always if I could keep my, if I, I just need my front end to stay down, I would have been, I'd have been a tenth I think better. His car looked even more stable than yours. Yeah. Okay. Juan was probably running more throttle in the center. It blows me away when I hear Kyle after a race describe it. When I'm trying to get wide open, I just, I lose all right retraction. I can never get from the center all the way to the next corner. How does he retain that when, with all that other stuff going on, how do you remember those little moments? We obviously all respect that Kyle and what he does in a race car is pretty damn incredible. And, uh, we'll probably never get to see somebody like that again, at least in my lifetime. Oh, it amazes me how analytical he is. I sometimes just scratch my head and, 
and say, how does he remember all that? Honestly, I think everybody's kind of confused or in awe of it. Um, I still am. I think it's just a gift from God, honestly. It's like I get to the gas and I spin really quick and it like gives me that feeling that my right rear is over cushion. Kyle's a real deal and uh, you know, he just, he makes speed everything he gets into. Uh, he's fun to watch. Not so much fun to race with. Because I want to win. I want to win and he's really good at winning. He is fast and, and his cars are fast, but what impresses me the most is how aware he is of where you're going to be. As there's Larson in the 01 threading the needle. There was a delay there, he just made one. At times you feel like the guy's got eyes in the back of his head when you're racing against him. It's truly, it's, it's pretty impressive and it makes him very, very hard to beat. If you can beat Kyle right now, then you're beating Kyle Larson in his prime, right? And if you can beat Kyle Larson in his prime, then you're doing something. As Kyle Larson flexing his muscle at qualifier four. Chili Bowl, he's always on my prelim night and he's taken a prelim win from me. You expect these prelim A mains, based off of the ones you've run in the past, you expect them to be pretty wild or pretty calm? Uh, well, when you got guys like Buddy and, and Timez in the, in the field, it's always going to be wild. Buddy was running on my prelim night, so Tuesday was much tougher this year. Full-time midget guy, really good driver with Keith Coons' team. Keith Coons, he's the winningest uh, USAC car owner in the sport. So he's tough. Buddy's been on fire and beating these guys, and we're, we're ready. Michael Buddy Kofoy, the only guy in the field that I think has anything for young money, Kyle Larson. He's every bit as good as anybody in this building. They can't win forever. Somebody's going to knock them off, and we're hopefully we're the ones to do it. Because he passed the most cars in his prelims, Kyle Larson has qualified in first position for the Tuesday night feature. He needs to win this race to secure a strong starting spot in Saturday's championship. For years, Tuesday night has been Kyle Larson night, the titan of Tuesdays. Kyle Larson and Buddy Copeboy lead him into three and out of corner number four. Three flat we go racing, Larson. Textbook into one and two on the bottom of the racetrack. Down the back straightaway he goes. Putting Kofoy into chase mode early on in this race. This chess match has just been brilliant. Here comes Kofoy again. Got him. Around the got top. Him. And he got him he down got the back straightaway. And he got to the bottom too. Can he hold it? He bikes oh. it up. He does not. Buddy Kofoy, your new leader, with five to go. Five fingers in the air from Terry Maddox. Larson's going to throw the haymaker. Larson gets a chance to try to run the top and come back around him, but it's so far around. Get Kofoid, be good down low. Kofoid back to the top of one and two. Slide jump, Larson doesn't complete it. Larson's wow. gonna try it just like he did the Viroc, throwing everything he can at the kitchen sink at Buddy Kofoid. Gonna get him right here. He's gonna clear this. Big bomb down to one and two. Larson's got it off the cushion, but Kofoid turns back underneath. Buddy Kofoid holds it to the three and four. Larson back to the top. Can Kofoid hold? in the world and it's Larson dropping back another spot. Larson lost the spot to Wyndham. Now he's got to scramble to get back into a lock-in position. Wyndham down low, Larson up top with one to go. This is Kofoids, but this is about the lock-in on the final time around. Larson, the haymaker to one and two, trying to get the lock-in spot. Wyndham bites off the cushion, but through three and four, Michael Buddy Kofoids going to get himself a prelim win here at the Chili Bowl National. Despite coming in second place, Larson is still locked into the Chili Bowl feature as they take the top two finishers. Kyle definitely handles losses well. Um, there's been, you know, a few, well, Chili Bowl 2019 was not good. One more lap to go. White Larson flag. to the bottom, Bill within a car lane. Uh, that's like my worst racing memory ever. Now enter, turn one and two. Larson low, Bill down there, banging wheels. Final set of corners, final time. Larson in, they bang again, but Bill steals it at the line. Ooh, ooh, that was not good, yeah. I'm not going to talk about that. Yeah, that was, that was a painful, painful loss. You don't want to talk about that. No, he left me. He left me at the motorhome because I said something stupid. 
I said, why'd you let Belle pass you <laughs> on the last corner? That's so probably not the best thing to say. I guess I'm not used to him being that mad or upset about something, but that was one of those, that race is so special to him, I guess I just didn't realize that. But Bill steals it at the line! That's been the only race that's ever kept me up at night. For a few nights, like, I could not sleep, just replaying it over and over and over and over in my head. But Bill steals it at the line! It was painful, like, seeing his happiness. I was kind of getting honestly burnt out on Bell beating me in the same equipment. And apparently he knows how to do some cyclone donuts as well. That chili bowl, I had it kind of made up in my mind that that was going to be my last one with Keith. Like I wanted to move on and start my own team with Paul Silva. I mean, he is the best. I'd wanted to do that for a while. It's just a big risk and kind of, you know, if it doesn't work out, it looked kind of dumb. The end of 19 off season leading into 20 Chili Bowl. But with that car behind me was uh, just, I mean, the greatest midget stretch that I could think of of the last couple decades anyways. We went nine for 11, I think, in that car. Nine wins and 11 races. Our worst finish was fourth. But other than that, we won every race and pretty much dominated everything. Destiny fulfilled for Kyle Larson at the 34th Chili Bowl National. When he won the Chili Bowl in 2020, I realized when I saw the tears and the emotion, I definitely knew how special the Chili Bowl and that win meant to him. Little rivalry now that you're sitting behind and watching him win? Doesn't matter, he's just another guy. Thank you. It's all about going home with that drillery, you know. Um, it's like nothing else. I mean. There's guys been around here for 20 years and can't get it. That's the one special trophy there is that everybody wants. I'm sorry NASCAR, I'm sorry Daytona, but this is the biggest race I've ever won. I did get in trouble for, for saying uh, I wanted to win the Chili Bowl more than Daytona 500 or some something along those lines. What I meant by that was you know, there's races that, you know, young kids dream of winning someday, and I hadn't dreamt of really winning the Daytona 500 because I didn't grow up stock car racing. That young man has consistently honored his dirt racing roots from the very beginning, and now he has won one of the flagpole races that we have, the ultimate test of midget racing, and Kyle Larson's a champion. Yeah, I won my first Chili Bowl, so it only took... 13 years. You know, events like this where, where Ashley can get in and come be a part of it all, you know, I, I love that. R racing's tough, right? You lose a lot more than you win. And uh, so she gets to deal with the me that that lost a lot. Um, What's that like? And it ain't real good usually. <laughs> we have to take advantage when we don't have the kids. Yes. One of his like first breakout years was a few days after we had the twins. So I watched him on an iPad with a bunch of nurses in the NICU for his first big chili bowl, and it was. So it brings back really special memories of like the twins being born and just his career really getting started there. He's climbing out of the car, makes the noise for Justin Graham! This week's been a dream come true. Good run to third. Now you got to go home and hug those new twins, buddy. Justin Grant, third place finish. Yeah, if there's a sentimental favorite out there, he certainly had to be the one. Winning his qualifying night with the Chili Bowl in 17, it put him on the map. And I think that it really showed car owners his level of focus. He just had two babies three days before that. So going there and having that switch to flip was really important to show. You know, you go to the racetrack, you've got to be switched on kill. You're there for a job. You're there to take other people's money. If you're not fully present, you're not going to perform as well as you should in the seat. Not lighting up. Is that my not lighting up? 
Do we have another battery? Okay, so we got we got no power regardless of which box is in, right? Okay, so we got to have something down at the battery, right? You know, on the way to staging, I flip the switch on, no lights come on. Hey, my light, my not lighting up. If we don't solve that, the car will not run. Not making it out is a very real and the probable outcome. Just everybody get Bob get the out of the way. Lacey, get in here. You know what you're doing. I think everybody that knows Justin Grant would say he's very particular. Yeah, I'm a giant pain in everybody's ass. It's been pointed out that I maybe am a bit of a control freak. Yeah. Well, he has to be. When he's not a control freak, things go wrong, he gets hurt, he doesn't win. It's just better when he does it because you have to have that level of control and you have to be so in tune like he is. Somebody put a voltmeter on the battery and see if the battery's got power, then start working our way up. At that point, I was very stressed because we did not know what was wrong. That's some of the moments I live for. I love, I love the show that happens in racing. Hey, we got it right here. We got something right here. Broken wire. We got broke wire. We had to put a new end on the wire, put it back on the switch. Even once we found it, you know, well, I'm doing it in the seat. I need a fill, I need a fill up screwdriver. And holding parts in my mouth, and there's little tiny screws there that, you know, you, you drop a screw and you're probably not finding it. That one's ready to fall off. And then the whole thing is kind of off the rails again. I need a pair of pliers. Pair of pliers. We've got pliers. We've got pliers. I got pliers. Okay, we're gonna have to roll here. That's where I'm next. At Chili Bowl, there's no time. There's three, four hundred cars in the building, and they don't care who you are, and they don't have time to wait on you. Lacey, she's basically like they're finishing buttoning the side of the car up, and she's riding on the Nerf bar down onto the track as she's buttoning up. There's nothing more rewarding that you were this close to not making it, but you figured it out and got it back together just in time. Okay, thank you, everybody. Go get him, buddy. Good work, guys. Ooh. All right, so Mr. Friday Night, it's your turn. Kick off your run to yet another one. So I'm really competitive and I'm more nervous for him not to win. How much pressure do you put on them to win? I put no pressure on them to win. They put enough pressure on themselves. The pressure the Chili Bowl puts on you to perform every single lap, for me, that's what makes it so different from the other races. He really is expected to go to the Chili Bowl and deliver. And if you want to be in a top-notch ride, you have to continue to deliver every year. Qualifying race number two is due up next year on Driven to Save Lives qualifying night here in the arena. As the field pushes out onto the raceway, let's get you your lineup. Your pole sitter's Brian Wiedemann out of Kansas. Next to him, it's David Boudris. Row number two, Clinton Boyles. Next to him, Justin Grant. Wiedemann on the pole will watch Justin Grant. Only went seventh to third in his heat race. We'll see if he can pick up some points here as Wiedemann and Berger lead them off into corner number one for Green. Wiedemann's got the edge going through one and two. He's bringing Boyles with him. Grant got a little piece of tire there. Grant's going to use a whole lot of tire. Up and Boudreaux right up and over the wall. Yeah, you don't think he's in a hurry. And Grant quickly now to the back bumper of Boyles. He'll go top shelf in three and four. A long way around for Justin Grant. He's got the momentum into one. There's a lot of speed down the straightaway for Justin Grant. Now to turn number two. Quickly up into the second position goes Grant. Justin Grant has caught Wiedemann. Justin Grant has passed Wiedemann. Justin Grant looks like the fastest car on the racetrack. Once again, as he stretches away from Wiedemann down the back straightaway. Quickly, the white flag already out for Justin Grant, who's in turn one and two for the final time. Healthy lead, about a half straight away over Bryant Wiedemann. Cushion checker flag, and Justin Grant lost stumbles it. at the line and lost it. Wiedemann beat him to the line by .234. I was like, oh my gosh, his motor must have laid down. I, I don't know, it had mechanical problems earlier. That's totally my, like, Justin can do no wrong on the racetrack. What's going on? Oh, K 
camera guy has seen Mills speculating that maybe he thought the white was the checkered? Maybe. I think we've all done it. Just I've... a bad stage to do it on right Absolutely. here. Absolutely. It wasn't over? No, it wasn't over. I thought it was over. No, no, no big deal. No big deal. You know, in that moment, just a complete failure of awareness on my part, in my mind, has just thrown away our chili bowl. Because I had in my mind that I had to win that qualifier to get in position to win the feature. And so now I'm starting too deep to win the prelim, and I need to win the prelim or run second to get into the pole shuffle. And that's my only shot at winning the chili bowl. And short of that, I've got no desire to be there. Doc, I. Sorry, I. While Kyle Larson's position in the championship is secured, Justin Grant's fate is still unknown after his critical mistake on the track. To win a golden driller, the Chili Bowl demands perfection. And this race is still anyone's game. Hey. Do you think he races too much? Yeah, he races too much. Ooh, drama. This part. Drama. Yeah. If you can beat Kyle, you you, you're, you're Kyle, by the yeah. way. Then you're beating Kyle Larson in his prime. It's go time. I was going to drive my ass off to win. So he's ready. I'll look for you under yellows. You tell me where to run, all right? The time is now, dude. You piss me off, and you know what? I stand on the gas as hard as I can if you piss me off. Because when you're running this far from the wall, you can't have any mistakes. If you want to be in a top notch ride, you have to deliver every year. <laughs> At least it took out Larson, too. <laughs> can't have him win everything, you know? Wide open. We're out making millions of dollars. Never in my life seen anybody with the talent that that kid there's got. He could be a huge part of the sport till the day he dies. I've worked my whole life to get right here. You have to keep that drive inside of you to stay in this spot. Just get it close and I'll go beat guys. Am I superstitious? Yes. I caught ya. If we're going to win this thing, it's time to go. Oh no, this is real. 